My name is Luke Resop. I'm here with the MSU Deer Lab. And today we want to talk about habitat management, specifically invasive species management. Here in the Southeast, managing invasive species has got to be part of your habitat management plan if you're serious about it. And you can see today we're uh, on school forest property in a very low basal area pine stand. Um, and there's lots of sunlight on the ground which is great in terms of deer forage production and cover, but it also allows some of the more invasive species that require a lot of sunlight to be very competitive. In the southeastern United States, Sericea lespidiza is one of the invasive species that we have to pay the most attention to. Now, Sericea, you know, it's non-native. It's from Asia originally, and it was actually originally brought to the United States for a variety of reasons and used in a variety of applications. Um, it was used as livestock forage, even though it's very poor nutritional quality. It's not a good livestock forage. Um, it was brought here um, because it's, it actually is good erosion control. You know, we'd never recommend planting it for erosion control. There are way better native options to go with down that route, but it is a perennial. So it's got living root system in the ground year after year. It'll come back on the same, uh, from the same root mass year after year. It's a good seed producer and um, Actually, you know, there's lots of different Lespedezas. Many of them are native. Some of them are non-native like Sericea or bicolor Lespedeza, um, another invasive one. But uh, the Lespedezas are generally very good seed producers for wild turkey and bobwhite quail. The issue with Sericea is that its seed coat is so hard that when bobwhite quail eat the seed, um, it will, their crop, when they're trying to digest it, it'll just scarify the seed. They get no nutritional value from it because the seed coat's so hard they can't even break it down. And then when they poop it out, it actually increases Sericea's germination rates. So bobwhite quail will readily eat the seeds, but they get nothing out of it and they actually help to spread Sericea. So just all around, it's a, it's a terrible plant. Sericea is also a very poor quality deer forage. It's rarely selected by white-tailed deer. It's very low on the preference scale. It's very low on the quality scale. It's very low on the digestibility scale, just all around terrible deer forage. Um, Sericea will also, because of its, you know, one of the things that makes it a very competitive invasive plant is that, you know, it'll grow in these little colonies and it will actually degrade the soil quality around it through its root exudates and prevent other plants from being able to grow there. So not only is it just competitive, it actually degrades soil quality and prevents other more beneficial plants from colonizing the area. And so all of this put together is why we make it a priority to control Sericea lespedeza. Now, before um, we start spraying Sericea, there are a few important things to keep in mind. One is that the timing at which we spray Sericea is important. We generally want to spray Sericea in early to mid-June for a couple of reasons. One is beginning to devote a lot of energy to reproduction, um, so it's very susceptible to herbicide at that time of year. So if we wait until, you know, mid to late July, August, September, Sericea will still be out there but it's already flowered, it's already produced seed, and you've essentially missed an opportunity to reduce the number of Sericea seeds on the landscape if you wait till later in the growing season versus you know early to mid-June. Now, another important thing to keep in mind with Sericea is that there are lots of other native, very beneficial Lespedezas that are highly selected by, you know, some of them are good deer forage, um, some of them are uh, very good seed producers. Many of them are very good seed producers for bobwhite quail and wild turkey. And some of them, like slender Lespedeza, for example, looks extremely similar to Sericea Lespedeza. But there are a few key differences that can help you tell them apart so that when you're spraying Sericea, you're not also spraying slender Lespedeza. They often grow in very similar areas, sometimes right next to each other. So uh, one of the main differences, just looking at them from a distance, you can tell often from 10 to 15 yards away, you know, spray distance, just by looking at the form. Sericea lespedeza is often very bushy. It'll have many little branches coming off the main stem, and it's just got more of a branchy structure. Whereas slender lespedeza is often one or just a couple of stems. Now, 
The uh, base of the leaf or the petiole on Cerisia lespidiza is often a little bit shorter than the native beneficial slender lespidiza. And a surefire way to tell these two species apart every single time is by looking at the venation on the leaf. The venation on a Cerisia leaf is very straight. It's like a, it's almost like a rib cage on a fish. The veins are coming straight out from the mid rib right to the end of the leaf. Now, slender lespidiza, the venation is much more complex. It kind of looks like a spider web where the veins are, you know, very interwoven and they're just much more complicated. And the way I, that I remember that is that I tend to think things that are complex are pretty cool and native plants are cool. And slender lespidiza is a native plant. It's got a complex venation relative to Cerisia and it is cool. Cerisia is uncool. So um, we've talked about a little bit of Cerisia's history, why it was brought here, what makes it so competitive as an invasive, um, its lack of wildlife value, and um, how to differentiate it from some of the common look-alike native species. Now let's talk about how to actually control it. So there are a couple of different herbicide options that we can use to control Cerisia lespidiza. Um, one of the most effective is pasture guard. Now, pasture guard is a combination between triclopyr and fluoroxapyr, and it's very effective at controlling cerisia. Um, but it's, pasture guard is a little bit more expensive than glyphosate, and glyphosate controls cerisia dang near as well as pasture guard does. So today we're you know spraying a two percent solution of glyphosate, and we're really just taking a spray, psh, psh, and that's it. Like it doesn't take much. You don't want the droplets of herbicide dripping off the plant because that's just a waste of herbicide it just needs a very light coat and you can see on my hand i've actually got spray indicator dye that i spilled all over myself that we often use especially when we're using backpack sprayers so you know if you're walking through the woods with a backpack sprayer and you're kind of gritting an area you want to know which plants you've sprayed and which plants you haven't so by using a blue indicator dye when we spray it, the little blue specks will cover this plant and you will very easily distinguish a plant that has already been sprayed from one that's not been sprayed. It just helps you be more efficient in the field. It's vital to do this every single year. If you let Cerisia get out of hand for two, three, four, six years, it'll get out of hand and it'll get out of hand quick. Um, the best way to deal with it is to stay on top of it. And like we talk about with everything else in habitat management, it always takes uh, repeat applications, it takes dedication, it takes time investment, and it's a financial investment. But if you are invested in the plant community on your property, in the deer forage production on your property, uh, seed production for bobwhite quail and wild turkey, controlling invasive plants like Cerisia is an essential part of the equation. Just like when a bobwhite quail eats a Cerisia seed and scarifies it in its crop, poops it out, and increases Cerisia's germination rates, there's good evidence to suggest that, that same thing happens after prescribed fire. Now, we just wrapped up a study here at the MSU Deer Lab indicating that Cerisia is strongly associated with dormant season fires. Um, now, it makes a lot of sense that if you burn in the dormant season or maybe early growing season, top kill all the plants that are there, increase Cerisia's germination rates, the ones that are germinating from seed, and then come back later in the growing season once the top killed plants are re-sprouting and once the new seedlings are popping up from seed and you spray it, you can get really good control. So the take home of that is if you're gonna burn, especially in the dormant season in an area where you've got a lot of Cerisia, just make sure you're staying on top of it with an herbicide application soon afterwards.